Okay, hi everybody. Today we're going to go over solving quadratic equations by completing a square. So here we have a quadratic equation, and in order to complete the square, before you can start the process of completing the square, the coefficient of the quadratic term has to be 1 before you can complete the square. So because we have an equation, we can go ahead and divide each of the terms by 5, and that will help us get that coefficient to be positive 1. In other words, it needs to be a happy trinomial in order to complete the square. So now that our quadratic term is positive 1, we can go ahead and complete the square. So to start the process of completing the square, we actually need to move the old C out of the way, and we're going to make room for a new C. So we're going to move the old C out of the way. Now remember when we take the negative 3 and move it over to the other side, it becomes a positive 3. So we have to find out what is the constant or the C, what is the constant that will make this a perfect square trinomial? Because remember, that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to make this become a perfect square trinomial. And remember, we already talked about what it means to be a perfect square trinomial. And I'm just going to go ahead and abbreviate to save time. So we want that to be a perfect square trinomial. So there is a formula in your textbook that you can look up. Um, maybe you can try to figure it out on your own without looking it up. But I'm going to go ahead and use a diamond to help us find the new C. So our new C is going to be the top number. So we're going to take the linear coefficient, and we have to figure out what could you add that equals 6, and then we can, of course, find the new C. So of course, there's lots of things that add up to give you 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. 7 plus a negative 1 is 6. But remember, we're trying to construct a perfect square trinomial. Therefore, our factors must be the same number. Therefore, to figure that out, of course, you already know what the answer is, don't you? If we take 6, don't we have to cut it into 2 because we're breaking it into 2 pieces? So 6 divided by 2, that means each of these has to be 3. Because remember, these have to be identical to be a perfect square trinomial. And then, of course, if you multiply 3 times 3, you get 9. So 9 is what completes the square. 9 is the new C. The problem is, is we just now added 9 to the left-hand side of the equation. So now we're unbalanced. So to make it balanced, if we're going to add 9 to one side, then we need to balance it out by adding 9 to the other side. So we added 9 to keep the balance. The whole purpose of making a perfect square trinomial is what does it look like when you factor? So when you factor this trinomial, aren't you going to get Aren't these our factors right up here? So if you factor that, that means our factors are x plus 3 and another x plus 3. And of course, we can write that a lot quicker as x plus 3 squared. And then, of course, 3 plus 9 is 12. So we have 12 on the other side. That was the entire reason as to why we wanted to make this a perfect square trinomial, because perfect square trinomials factor as something squared. And therefore, we can continue now by using the square root property. So to undo squaring, we're going to take the square root. And of course, if you take the square root of one side, you need to take the square root of the other side. And what do you have to remember? Whenever you use the square root property, that's right, the plus and minus. Hope you didn't forget that on your test. I have to mark you down. And don't forget, you have to always simplify your radicals. I cannot give you credit if you do not simplify your radicals. So 4 times 3 is 12, 4 is a pair of 2, so 2 square root 3.
Okay, so now we can finish up by subtracting three from both sides. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this, because I think my line, so I'm gonna go ahead and way up over here, we're gonna finish this off. So that gives us x equals negative three plus or minus two square root three. And there's our answer. And if you really wanted to, you could break your answer up and say negative three plus two radical three and or comma and negative three minus two square root of three. So if you want to break them up as to two separate answers or you can leave the shortcut version of the plus and minus, either way is fine. So that was kind of an easy one. Let's try a little bit more of a more challenging problem. So let's start problem number two. Let's do something a little bit more challenging. Of course, you know what I mean by more challenging. Fractions. Don't we love fractions? Are you guys less fraction phobic? This is going to be a good problem. Hold on to your hats. Okay, so in order to complete the square, remember it has to be a happy trinomial. In other words, the coefficient of the quadratic term has to be one before we can even begin completing the square. So we're good to go. So we are going to start the process by moving the old C out of the way and we're going to make room for a new C. Remember our goal is to make this trinomial a perfect square trinomial. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to make this a perfect square trinomial by finding a new C that will make that happen. Don't forget since this is a negative 3 you move it over to the other side that becomes positive 3. So we're going to try and find a new C that will make it a perfect square trinomial. And once again, there is a formula that you can use. I just go ahead and use the diamond. So what two numbers add up to be 5? Well, there's lots of numbers that add up to be 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. Ne um, positive 7 plus a negative 2 is 5. So there are a lot of numbers that add up to five, but remember to make this a perfect square trinomial, these factors have to be equal. They have to be the same. So we're gonna go ahead and take the five and we gotta divvy it up or we gotta cut it or break it into two sides. So we're gonna divide it by two. Now, of course, when you do that, that would give you two and a half. So two and a half goes on both sides. But in this particular procedure, it's probably going to be more beneficial to leave it as an improper fraction. If you want to, you can go ahead and put it as a mixed number, but you'll see why in a minute it's beneficial to leave it as an improper. So 5 has plus 5 has really does add up to 5, and you can check it if you want. To get the new C, don't we have to multiply 5 halves times 5 halves? And remember how to multiply fractions? You multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominator, so that gives you 25 fourths. Now don't forget, any time you're working with fractions, you should always reduce your fractions whenever possible. So if I could reduce 25 fourths, I certainly would have. We're going to go ahead and leave it as an improper fraction, but it should still be reduced. So 25 fourths is my new C. So 25 fourths is what I'm going to add to both sides. That's what completes the square. 25 fourths completes the square. But if you add 25 fourths to one side, you've got to keep the balance by adding 25 fourths to the other side. So now we have a perfect square trinomial. And if we factor this, how does that factor? Oh my gosh, do I really want you to factor this god-awful trinomial? Well, don't worry about it because aren't the factors right here? So that's why I like using the diamond to help us find the new C. So my, this factors into x plus 5 halves times another x plus 5 halves of which can just be written as x plus 5 halves squared. 
Now, of course, we actually have to add 3 plus 25, 4. So how are we going to do that? Well, couldn't we? One way is to go ahead and change 25, 4 to, <coughs> excuse me, a mixed number. So 4 goes into 25 six times with one left over. So that equals 9 and 1 fourth. And for this particular procedure, it's probably better to put that as an improper fraction. So 4 times 9 is 36 plus 1. So we're going to write it as an improper fraction. And once again, if I could reduce this, I would have reduced it. Always reduce your fractions, but I'm going to leave it as an improper. So now we can go ahead and unsquare. So we're going to do the square root because square rooting and squaring, they undo each other. And again, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. Because I just used the square root property, what do I need to remember? That's right. You have to remember your plus and minus because you used the square root property. Now, don't we have to simplify our radical? So off to the side of your paper. Doesn't that mean the square root of 37 over the square root of 4? And I'm thrilled because the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, thank goodness. Because remember, if that did not equal the whole number 2, if I had a radical underneath here, I'd have to do all that rationalizing the denominator work. Remember, you're not allowed to have any pairs hiding under the radical. So are there any pairs hiding in 37? Nope. And I know that's true very quickly because I know that 37 is a prime number. So knowing some of your prime numbers can help you with this skill. So there we go. So I've simplified that. So now we can go ahead and finish up the problem by subtracting both sides by 5 halves. And just in case we're running out of room, I'm going to move this up over here because I don't know if it's going to show it. So that gives us x equals negative 5 halves plus and minus the square root of 37 over 2. Do you think we can leave our answer that way? Nope. Because shouldn't you add the fractions together? And when you're adding fractions, don't you have to have common denominators? Aren't we thankful that we already have common denominators? Because if we didn't, that's right, we would have to get common denominators. So we're happy that we already have common denominators. So how do you add fractions? Don't you keep the denominator the same? And don't you just add the numerators? So that's going to give us negative 5 plus and minus square root of 37. So now we are done. So I hope these two problems, one kind of a medium problem and then this one a little bit more difficult. They can even get a little bit more difficult than this, but that's a good start to get you going on how to complete the square. So replay this as often as you need so that um, you can understand how to complete the square. See you soon.